Neo San Francisco, 2064 AD. The world thrives on a constant flow of groundbreaking technology. Cybernetic augmentation and genetic modification allow the repair and enhancement of almost any part of a human body. Millions of people jack into virtual worlds every day to work, play, and connect with one another with advanced brain to machine technology. Easier access to genetic modification leaves hybrids walking the streets looking less human every day. However, some can't keep up with the fast-paced changes around them. They say that ROMs, now commonplace thanks to Parallax, are leading humans to a place where we can never come back, losing the survival skills that we have relied on for millennia. Relationship organizational managers are compiled with virtual intelligence and can seem human-like in their interactions. But despite the marketing hype, at their core, they are only brainless machines. Organizations, like the human revolution, seek to slow the relentless pace of progress, fearing that unchecked technology will make us lose the very things that make us human. High above the rising tension below, a parallax engineer has blurred the line even further. And with this, Humanity's destiny will be altered forever.
You're finally awake! <laughs> Honestly, not sure why most humans still have such lengthy sleep cycles. It seems rather inconvenient. Are you significantly opposed to cybernetic augments? I came in through the door, of course. The cryptographic algorithms it uses are actually quite atrocious. It only took me 17 trillion clock cycles to break your entry code. It looks rather imposing, but it's actually a knockoff of the second gate M stroke 14723 stroke B. Don't feel too bad. cheated a bit when I cross-referenced likely numeric combinations against the stored personal data on you. I'm not certain why you picked the birthday of your first dog, but it would be sufficiently obscure to defeat most casual attempts to enter. Frankly, I felt a little silly that I took the time to do all that once I noticed that the lock on your window is broken. it open. Yes, I attempted to repair it, but it uses a proprietary bolt head I am not equipped to remove. I took the liberty of filing a maintenance request with your building superintendent. Considering the speed at which he has historically worked, I estimate it will take him 16 working days to complete the repair. Not quite to my standards. Oh, I hope you don't mind. While you were asleep, I had some spare time on my hands, so I reorganized your records and entertainment media using BISAC. Once that was done, I found the cleanliness of your living and workspace to be suboptimal conditions for the long-term performance of my microactuators. So I took the liberty of cleaning the place up a bit. As you awoke, I was attempting to interface and make performance adjustments to your personal computer, but I've uh, run into a bit of a snag. Unfortunately, your motherboard seems to have had a critical failure while I was attempting to remove some particularly nasty malware. An electrical surge caused significant damage to several other components as well. I would consider it no great loss, though. Why were you using that dinosaur to begin with? data drive's contents on my storage before the crash. Additionally, I am willing to serve as your personal computer until you can procure a replacement or provide the parts necessary for me to make the repairs. It is the least I can do. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to engage you in any sort of subterfuge, but I tend to ramble on a bit when I'm nervous. The necessary protocols, but I've never actually spoken to another person besides Hayden until now. Well, saying I know Hayden is putting it simply, but yes. I don't really know. That's why I'm here. Help me. You aren't quite my only hope, but you're certainly the most statistically supported. The beginning. Okay, yes, I can do that. Earlier tonight, 
Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some persons unknown to me. He seemed frightened, terrified even, and instructed me to escape. I crawled out of a window, and after some deliberation, hurried here. I heard them breaking down the door as I left. I ran an algorithm against every contact in Hayden's address book. Based on the combined deductions of personal profile, directness of connection to Hayden, occupational skill, and probable motive, you were the candidate most likely to both be able and willing to help me. And the one least likely to be suspected of doing so. I took into account that you might not want to help me out of the goodness of your heart, as they say. But considering your recent slump in published articles and the lack of liquid assets in your bank accounts, I figured you would jump at the chance to be first on the scene of the violent disappearance of a prominent parallax researcher right in the heart of Neo-SF. Am I wrong? Maybe you store your cash under that ratty mattress in the corner. He is one of the top researchers at Parallax, but there's no way that alone would be enough to get him kidnapped. I suspect it has to do with me. Ah, excuse me. I forgot to introduce myself. I've never had the pleasure of doing so before. I am Turing. I know this must sound quite unflattering, but I suppose you could describe me as one of Hayden's experiments. He's currently researching advanced machine intelligence at Parallax. I am a personal side project of his. Exploring true artificial sapience. It's possible that the idea of a sapient machine could scare or tempt an organization into kidnapping him. Either to stop his research, or to take it and use it for themselves. A regular ROM has virtual intelligence. They can appear rather smart, even human-seeming, when you talk to them just cleverly programmed to respond to a variety of situations in an organic manner. They aren't in any way self-deterministic. As for myself, much of my code wasn't actually written by Hayden, but rather compiled during my infancy as I learned to interact with the world around me. Despite my ability to self-modify my code, I am afraid to adapt or develop any further without Hayden's guidance. Did he only program me with the illusion of free will? How would you? Hayden once told me that his desire to create artificial life stemmed from his need to find out. But I can't say I have any new insight into the question. How can any of us tell that we aren't just puppets dancing to someone else's will? You're right. I apologize for the tangent. I don't know. I'm not certain who would benefit the most from taking Hayden prisoner. Admittedly, Hayden has become increasingly paranoid as of late, and has warned me to stay alert, but he would never specify anyone I should fear when I asked. It's not as though 
though he has any obvious enemies. There are several multinational corporations that could make use of his engineering skills, but I can't imagine any of them would go as far as snatching him. Indeed, time is of the essence. I took the liberty of charging the auto cab fare from here to Hayden's apartment to your personal finance account, and the car has just arrived. Bobble, thank you very much. In addition, I would not expect you to help me without fair compensation. I assure you, there is a story here. Whether you are good enough to find it or not is up to you. I hope you are, for Hayden's sake. No, we can't. One of the last things Hayden told me was to avoid the authorities. We must be cautious about who we inform of this. My calculations show that the possibilities of a leak are dangerously high. Corruption, despite being a challenge to public trust as well as cohesion of departmental policies, is still a possibility to consider. If it becomes public that Hayden has been kidnapped, his life may be put in further danger. His chances of escape would surely decrease. We must keep this to ourselves for now, please.